All right, this is going to be page one of note 16 of Calc C. We're going to talk about parametric equations. So I'm going to sort of assume that you have done math analysis notes 15 at some point in your life. So if you've done it at some point in your life, uh, you're good to go. If you've never done it, you might want to go back and take a look at that because um, there's just like a lot of stuff in there. And I'm assuming that you have that background information. So uh, that's, that's where I'm starting from. And then, uh, so a lot of this will be reviewed at the beginning and then we'll like get more into the calculus stuff. So let's see if we can do it. Um, so uh, we want to sketch this. All right, well, uh, I guess I'll make some T's here. So negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. And then uh, to get the X coordinate, I'm just gonna plug in here. So square it, subtract four is zero. Square it, subtract four is negative three, negative four negative three, um, zero again, and then five. So those are the X coordinates. So we're gonna get ordered pairs, X, Y. So if you remember with parametrics, you don't see T. T is not gonna be on the graph. I mean, we could label our points with like T, T equals zero, T equals one, whatever, but we're not gonna like see it. Our graph is actually gonna have X is here and Y is here. And so now Y is T divided by two. So negative one, negative one half, zero, one half, um, uh, uh, one, and then uh, three halves. All right, so we gotta plot these. That's annoying. So zero, negative one is here. So that's where we are, t equals negative two. And then uh, negative three, negative one half, I guess would be like here. Negative four is zero. Let's say that that's at t equals zero. Uh, and then you're going to get some symmetry here, negative three, positive one half, zero, positive one, and then three, five, three, five, nope, five, three halves. Oh my gosh, I'm reading that wrong. Five, three halves. So we're here. Like it wasn't going to fit on the graph. And I was like, something's not right. And it was me. Uh, all right, here we go. So this is a parabola on its side. I don't know if it's going to ask us to, but, uh, you know, we could definitely eliminate the parameter. So let's see what we're asking. Find any X and Y intercepts of the curve algebraically, state the T values which they occur. So algebraically, um, if we want the, the X intercepts, then Y is equal to zero. So if Y is equal to zero, all right, so let's do this. Uh, X intercepts means that Y is equal to zero, which means that T over two equals zero so then x, nope, t, not x, ugh. t is equal to zero. If t is equal to zero and x is equal to uh, t squared minus four, oh, I wonder if that got picked up. That's, that's the beginning of the next class. I really should have uh, turned those off, but I didn't. So we'll see. Hopefully they're not being recorded, but maybe they are. All right, so x is equal to t squared minus four. So then, uh, ah, geez, now I'm opening this. You know, let's like turn these off. So this one's good. This one I don't need. Thank you. And then uh, let's go back to, back to our notes. Here we are. Okay, so x, ah, x is t squared minus four. So x is negative four. So we get negative four is zero. I feel like this doesn't look that great. Like, I don't know what's going on. I guess it's okay. All right, so negative four zero is our x-intercept. And you can see that that's definitely true. And then the y-intercept is when x equals zero. So y-intercept is gonna be when x equals zero, which means that t squared minus four equals zero, which means t equals plus or minus two. And then if t equals plus or minus two, and y is equal to, uh, okay, so y equals t over two. So that means that uh, if t equals negative two, y is equal to negative one. If t equals positive two, y is equal to positive one. So we're gonna get zero, negative one, and we're gonna get zero, one. So algebraically, you can solve these things. I mean, we already knew them, so like maybe we should have just like, you know, dived in with that. But dived in, dive, dove, whatever. Um, all right. Noting the orientation of the curve, 
do your best to describe the rate of change of x with respect to t, which is dx dt, and the rate of change of y with respect to t, which is dy dt. So we have a lot of derivatives for parametrics. We have um, x can change with time, so dx dt. y can change with time, so dy dt. And then y can change with respect to x, so we have a dy dx. And then we also have um, concavity, so we have a second derivative, which is uh, you know d squared y dx squared, like that second, no second derivative notation thing. Um, let's think about this. So from t equals 0, uh, no, t equals negative 2 to t equals 0, we're moving to the left, which means dx dt must be negative, right? If you're going to move to the left, then uh, x is decreasing, so dx dt should be negative. And then from 0 to 3, I guess, we're moving to the right. And so I'm going to label this as t equals 3. We're moving to the right, which means that dx dt must be positive. So think about for x, you're just thinking, are you moving to the left or are you moving to the right? That's all you're thinking. So here I'm going to say, uh, so dx dt is less than 0 for uh, negative 2, 0. And then dx dt is greater than 0 for 0 to 3. So this part, we're moving, moving left. I wonder if that, that, I feel like I messed up. I feel like this isn't like as smooth as it usually is. I don't know, maybe it is. I feel like that reminder messed me up or messed it up. Then you're moving up to the right there. So X is all about left and right. Y is all about up and down. So if we look here, um, all the way from negative two to three, y is increasing, which means dy dt should be positive. So you have to think about them completely independent of each other. dy dt greater than zero or negative two uh, to three, which means we're moving up the entire time. So the whole time you're just moving up. Uh, convert. The parametric equations to rectangular by eliminating the parameter. Okay. So x is t squared minus 4 and y is equal to t over 2. So uh, I mean I'm just going to say that that means that x is so t equals 2y. So on the 2y squared minus 4. So x is 4y squared minus 4. And that's it. We eliminated the parameter. There is no more. And you can see, I mean, it's a parabola that opens to the right. So like you would expect it to look like this. Uh, one thing, I don't know if we're going to be asked, I'm going to actually calculate dx dt and dy dt. So this is, uh, it tells you to just do it thinking, right? But like, if x if x is t squared minus 4, then dx dt is just 2t. And so now you can plainly see that dx dt is going to be greater than 0 for t greater than 0, which means you'll be moving to the right. And you can see that dy dt, nope, dx dt, still talking about that, dx dt will be less than 0 for t less than 0, which means you'll be moving to the left. Um, and then if y is equal to t over 2, then dy dt is 1 half, which is greater than 0 for all t, which is why you're always moving up. So we can analyze these things. That's the idea. Basically, every parametric uh, problem that we deal with is kind of just like an excuse to do two different two-dimensional things, right? You deal with x independent of y. Sometimes you combine them, but like we haven't gotten to that yet. We'll get to that next time. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up because that's page one, and I will see you in the next one.